building, you've probably at least wondered how you would get out of there if there was a fire. Those fears became all too real for thousands of Americans. On September 11th, many were trapped in the World Trade Center towers as the floors below them burned. Well, now inventors are working on new technology to help people get out alive. Ari Adzer has a look at one invention. Go ahead, step up. And down he goes. Looks simple, and it is. The Recover All High Rise Evacuation System being tested on this day by firefighters. I think this is impressive. It it's, it's, looks pretty easy to set up. It's easy to use. It's hand-free operation. It's self-contained. Uh, I think it'll work. Our equipment was designed specifically to be used by senior citizens, by children. That's why we chose a device that is fully automatic in, in operation. That's why we enclosed the victim inside a full coverage suit which eliminates the fear of heights. The first step for evacuation is putting on the big suit. Kind of makes you look like a baked potato, but this actually protects you from heat and flames if you're in a real fire situation. The firefighters let us go for a test ride. Picture one of these machines on your condo balcony ready to use or in your high-rise office stored away for an emergency. It buys you the time to escape. We are six floors up. Once you push back and let go, the machine lowers you gently to the ground at the rate of three feet per second. The ride is smooth all the way down. You never speed up, you never slow down. It keeps you at that same rate all the way down to the ground. So the obvious question on everyone's mind is, would this system have made any difference in the World Trade Center disaster? My personal opinion is this would have saved some people up there, absolutely. This cable, they said, was effective up to 1,000 feet. That's 100 floors. From the events of September 11th to the recent attacks in Mumbai, it's clear that high-rise buildings have become a well-known target for terrorists. Those trapped in buildings have only the use of an emergency stairwell in times of disaster. That is, until now. Initiated in September 2003, the Israeli company Escape Rescue Systems has designed a revolutionary external evacuation system that will save lives and get first responders, as well as SWAT teams, on location without having to enter the building. In July 2004, Escape installed the first prototype system on a 21-story building in Ramat Gan, Israel. Selected by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security as a qualified anti-terrorism technology, Escape's Rescue Systems is a collection of collapsible cabins permanently stored on the roof in a folding position. It's independently powered and operated to ensure its availability in a mass emergency. In their folded form, the cabins are lowered to the ground level, where first responders unfold and enter the cabins. The evacuation system can rescue 30 people per cabin every 8 minutes. You know, Mumbai was not a private uh, private event in India. It was, a, it was really a global event and caught everybody's attention. Uh, since Mumbai, we've been inundated basically by people from India and from other countries saying, wait a minute, these, uh, there is a problem. Uh, it looks like you guys might have a solution. So uh, let's look at it.
throughout the class. Uh, what we're going to be doing is talking about Firescape awareness. We're going to talk to you guys about the history of Firescapes and uh, the, uh, the point where Firescapes started getting ignored. My little button turned on here. And I'm going to tell you guys about this particular scenario if it ever happens to you and how this is not supposed to be uh, a point in time where you're supposed to be fearing the fire escape. It's not a point in time where you're supposed to be getting these people off the fire escape. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the history of fire escapes and why this is not a problem. Fire escapes since the 1900s were built to take 100 pounds per square foot. And even today, if I build a new one, I gotta pay, I gotta build it with 100 pounds per square foot. So what that means is that I have to engineer it so that I can take something that's three by five, that's 15 square feet times 100 pounds per square feet. That means I can have 1,500 pounds on that one platform. And if I have uh, an average person that weighs 150 pounds that lives in that building, I can have 10 people in a three by five square. You ever see 10 people in a three by five square? If you take half of that and you say you can put two to three hundred pound guys on there, like you guys weigh every now and then with all your gear, that means I can put five of you guys in a three by five square. So if if fire escapes are properly engineered, properly installed, and properly maintained, this is not a problem. You can even you can fill up the top one, the middle one, the bottom one, put people on the staircase, this thing will never come off the building. And if it does, the the wall has to come off the building. Because a lot of times these are all either through bolted or or cemented into the building. So you have, you have to have a whole catastrophic failure of the entire facade of the building in order for everybody to come down. Now what happens though is that if this thing is not made, it was fabricated correctly, it was installed correctly, and then it hasn't been maintained for 80 years, this is fearful. It's the worst scenario that you could ever have on any one of these buildings. And again, we'll repeat the, the story that everybody here knows. It's, everybody knows it here except the tenants that live in this building. The, uh, the old gray hair guys tell the new guys coming in in case of fire. That's it. Don't use them. Don't use them. Don't use the fire escape. Mm -hmm.